went there away and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were eating the coat, the owner thereof said unto them, Why eat all of you the coat? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus their own.
stepped it up. If you notice, we sound a little better today. Uh, they have installed and tested and upgraded our PA system. So I don't have to shout! <laughs> the mic is clear and we're able to continue to serve God and you can hear us and prayerfully we will as we progress in this pandemic and even after then because uh, the aspect of virtual church is not going to go away. Uh, anytime soon and I know that people are questioning can they come to church you have to do what your heart leads you to do it's pretty much like I've said before people asking you about the vaccination I took it because I'm high risk as far as hypertension and those things related to age stuff and borderline diabetic and all the other stuff the doctor finally convinced me to take it uh, so uh, I took it but I'm also of the mindset, too, that I'm not going to die before God says time anyway. No matter what I do. And as a people, many of us have been through some tra trauma that many people would have folded and their heart would have stopped anyway. But we're still here. Amen. By the grace and mercy of God. So don't think that we're forcing anyone to come to church because we're not. Don't think that we're forcing anyone to get vaccination because we're not. You follow your heart. And when you come to church, you come to church to worship God. Focus on that. Right. Just focus on worshiping God. Yeah. Focus on God. Yeah. Things will never be as they once were. The world has changed forever by this pandemic. We will not be what we once were anywhere. And no one knows how it's going to end up, saints. No one knows. We, we don't know. Listen to Fauci yesterday. Certain strands of it are bumping back up again. Mm -hmm. Because people are relaxing because of a vaccine of which they don't even know how long it lasts. Uh, this, these things are public information. It might be done June 3rd. We don't know. Uh, took it now. We don't know, but we're trusting on the promises of God. Be judicious and be safe. And continue to put your life in God's hands. And not lean that into your own understanding. If you're uncomfortable, follow your mind. And if you're uncomfortable and you're praying to God, you'll be all right. Let God have his way with you. Don't think that anybody's forcing anybody to do anything. Employers are not even forcing people to come back. And the thing of it is, is that we just have to stand on his promises, stand on his word. Because even when we come back, you got to wear a mask. And you have to sit apart from people that are in your family. And as this church and many churches in the city of Cleveland and beyond uh, is being sanitized two to three times a week to make sure that everyone is safe, we made it this far by grace and mercy. And God will continue to bless us because none of us are perfect. We're in the process of being perfected. And we must always realize this too. There was a pandemic in 1918, but there was also no internet, no Facebook. 
no TV, no electricity still, and they were coming in a lot of places. And the media was not like it is today. So we don't know how this is going to look. As it was said by the scientists of the special I was watching yesterday. Some people say maybe by 2022 we might have some simple semblance of what we used to call a normality. We don't know, but all we have to do is know that we do know who we need to know, that knows everything that we need to know, that has all the power that we need to know to live this Christian life. And that is Jesus Christ. I'm off the pop stand with that because people are wondering, what are we going to do? We're going to keep pushing on for the prize and the high call of Jesus Christ. And if it doesn't change anything, we will be outside having services. As soon as the world of Cleveland breaks, I know that might not be to July, but we're going to have that hold it on. Then it's going to get better than that. We're going to do what we need to do. But I stand here to tell you today, yes, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to stand on his promises. I'm going to stand on his day. Because nothing's too hard for God. And we do not let an invisible enemy stop us from worshiping God. For those who are at home right now that are watching and tuning in, invite your family to watch with you. Invite other people to come in. Because if we were having a prayer meeting or something else going on or a spot meeting, we would invite people. So we do the same. Pray that you are home, that God will bless you and this church. Pray that God will bless your family and this church and this community overall as we go about this. Just because you're at home doesn't mean you can't actively participate in worship and raise your hands in the sanctuary. Because our home should be a sanctuary. You should first attend church in your house. Serving the power of the glory of salvation of our Lord and Savior in your home. With the people in the church is where we come from. Edification and the strength of the jubilation. By collectively coming together with saints that are like minded so that we can be pulled in and turned on to the power of God. But if it's not a sanctuary in your home, you need one. Come together and study the word of God with the people in your home. Come and let God work within all of you. It is Palm Sunday. Jesus made the shrine for him to enter into Jerusalem on the dawn when they laid down their clothes and knees as he entered in to begin Passion Week. This is days before the Last Supper and we need to know this. If you are a Christian, every day the sun might not shine, but every day God is with you. You're going to have your Passion Week every once in a while. But know this, that when it's all over, as he got up, we can too. Because God is real and he's with us. Don't ever feel defeated. You might be defeated, but our God can be in you. Our God can be invigorated. Our God will mount you up with wings like an eagle so you can soar above the issues of life. Knowing that nothing on this side will make me compromise my faith. Everything here is temporal, and we will hold on to God. As Jesus went through this and was crucified, hanged, bled, and died, got up with all power, yes. so we don't have to go down and stay down. I thank God every day for God yes. sending His Son. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just got to stand up and just shout because how good God has been and it continues to be. If there's anybody in here been blessed by God, let me hear it. Amen. 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 to receive, receive the offering as deacon and financial committees come forward. Be willing to give unto God because God has blessed you. Because God has been mighty, 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 mighty,
these churches, even though the Jones is not here, we know they're here somewhere. And next Sunday we will be, this first time, I think this is happening in a while, but we're going to have communion and resurrection service the same day. It was so nice when we was little kids in East. It was the third Sunday in April. It was just so nice. It really was. Go ahead, David. Give me, Father, one. Thank you for the give and the givers. Bless those that had to give and those that didn't have to give. But you know they are. Continue to touch them and continue to bless them. And one day they'll be able to give and give abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is just so good to us that. We don't even know what to do sometimes. As we get ready to continue on in the church service, as the deacon comes and gives us all to call, know this. If there's anything that's bothering you, anything that's on your mind, anything that you're thankful for, we're at altar call. Let God know. Don't worry about it. He already knows. Ask God to heal their heart and to heal every dimension of your person. In a manner such that he will bring you the joy and the glory that you need. Amen. He can say. Get out the know, saints. We just want to thank the Lord for being by a God all by himself. Do you know that he blessed us one more year on Palm Sunday? You know, it's a lot of us that didn't make it this year. You know, uh, this pandemic and uh, all the different things that's been happening in the world today. You know, we're truly blessed to be here today. You understand? Uh, uh, not by our will, but by His will. Because we don't know what the cross would bring. We just, we're just blessed. We're so blessed. I can say it again. We are blessed. We just want to thank the Lord for being God. So continue to us, Lord. Continue to keep us on the straight and narrow. You know that we want to fall. And like I just said, we keep fall. We're going to get back up. We're not going to just lay there. We're going to get back up and continue on this journey because we know it's a rough journey. And we know that as long as we keep our eye on the fire, that you will carry us through. So continue to touch us, Lord. Continue to lift us up as we reach out as high as we can and you reach out as, as far as you can to help us. Continue, Lord, to, to do the things that we need for you to do and for us to do to make it through this life. Some people think that they got up this morning and the alarm woke them up. I don't have an alarm. The only alarm I have is Jesus in my head. And he wakes me up every morning. I thank him for the laying down last night and to get up this morning because he didn't have to do it. Now take a line drop down there to the cemetery and stop and get up. So it ain't about the alarm clock anymore. It's about Jesus Christ. So we got we got to we got to keep on a straight and narrow. It's getting harder and harder and harder as we go through this journey. So Lord, continue to lift us up. Continue to reach out. Continue to keep your arms wrapped around us because we know that as long as we're in your arms, we will have no problem. We will have problems. You can probably as long as we're in your arms, we will have no spiritual problems. So Lord, continue to bless us. Continue to keep us in your will. Continue to watch the Lord and the hospitals, Lord, and those that are nursing homes, those that are incarcerated, like I said earlier, those that are sleeping on the streets, continue to keep us up and arms around because they know that one day things will be better. Like the fellow has to say, we're not perfect on this side, we just get perfected. So continue to keep us on the straight and narrow, Lord, and we'll be so very, very careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Some of us have lost, lost more money than we ever made. Uh, in fact, truthfully, if you tell the truth, because if you live somewhere and didn't pay rent, that's money. If you ate a meal you didn't pay for, that's money. If you were uh, wearing clothes you did not buy, that's money. So wherever it is that you go, that's money. So saints of God, I want to talk to you a little bit today for a while about this being Palm Sunday and I'm going to talk to you from a passage of scripture in Matthew 16, 24 to 26. And 24 and 25, I'm sorry. 24 and 25. And I'm going to mention 26, but our main scripture will be Matthew 16, 24. This may sound like you've heard this before. At least I pray it does. When I read this, and when you are ready... I'm going to read it. Those of us who are watching, you can feel free to uh, type amen in the chat and say hallelujah and shout, whatever you need to do. Let your neighbors know you're praising God. Amen. amen. And it reads like this. Then Jesus said to the disciples, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For so whoever wants to save his life will lose it. So whoever loses his life because of me will find it. May God have best be in hearing of his holy word. Please be seated. Saints of God, I'm going to talk to you for a while about it matters who you follow. A lot of people wonder in their life why their life is not progressing in a manner that they think it should. Oftentimes we want what doesn't want us. And oftentimes we want what we should not even want. And oftentimes we leave God out of the equation of helping us navigate the reality that we live in to discover what it is that we're supposed to want. It says, let thy will be done in the Lord's Prayer, but many people skip thy will be done. And they leave our God because we're so focused on what we want and how we want it that we have a tendency as human beings to leave God by the wayside. I wonder sometimes when I look back over my life and I think about the people who have been in my life who may not have been what God wanted them to be, how many of them had God standing right next to them but left God sitting on the curb, all because of something that they wanted more so than their connection to Christ. So many people in our world, when we read the scripture, we always think of it, a lot of people, not all, because there are theologians in here and seminarians around, abound around us that went to real seminaries that know how to look at this passage and understand what Jesus is really saying. He's saying, take up your cross. He's not saying, carry two logs on your back that are tied together. What he's saying here is that if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny, I'm going to make this politically correct, his or herself, and take up his cross and follow me. That denial does not mean that you can't lead a life that is good. That denial means that you no longer are so focused on what you want that you can't ever see what God is trying to get you to do. That you're not willing to be receptive of all the blessings that God has given unto you. The moment that you were saved, God poured a talent into you. God poured a gift into you. What are you doing with it? 
Is it being nurtured? Is it progressing? Is it germinating? Is it propagating new species? Is it going out doing the things that God has intended for it to do? Or is it marinating and mildewing by the wayside because it doesn't fit into what you think you should be doing? See, a lot of times that cross that we're carrying means that it's a cost associated with being a Christian. See, the disciples knew that their lives were in danger because they associated themselves with Jesus. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I preached about Peter and how he didn't know Jesus when he got to the cruise to The thing about it is, is that many of us do the same thing. I said that then. Because as soon as they say, proverbial your funk hits the fan, we don't know Jesus no more. We start using his name in vain. We start doing other things that lead the world to believe that we Christians who are insane. Nobody in here, of course, would do that. It said deny himself. That doesn't mean that you don't eat. That doesn't mean that you don't sleep. That doesn't mean you don't go to work. If you don't work, you should not eat. That doesn't mean that you can't aspire to have education and do other things. But in the process of all of this, you're supposed to consult with God Amen. and how you're supposed to be. People say, I'm supposed to have kids. Are you? Should you? I need to work here. They pay more. Should you? God might want you here. You're going to flourish. You want to go over here because you think it looks good. Do you realize that if you look in Genesis, in chapter 3, in the fall of humanity, that the devil enticed Eve first to believe that God was holding something back from her. And she got with Adam, who was God told first, what to do, but because he felt that Eve was going to hold something back from him, All right. he didn't follow what God told him to do. So in essence, the devil is always trying to get us of course by leading us to believe that I need to have what's over there when God is pushing me over here. So then I'm wondering why am I up at night anxious and distressed because I'm trying to go over here where God is trying to send me over here. Why am I going over there? Well my friends say they pay $29 an hour. You can't run no back home and you sure don't know how to use a shovel. But over here they pay $18 an hour and you have all the skill sets that are needed. See, the thing about it is we chase after what glitters and glimmers and makes us look good, give us bragging rights, so we can sit around the Thanksgiving table and say, I make more an hour than you. I don't care how much you make an hour. How many of your hours in a day are spent praising God? Amen. Check this out. You might make $100 an hour, but over here, they might make $35 an hour or even $15 an hour. But because of the grace of God, and they picked up their cross, and came after God, and sacrificed their time, and gave up what they were supposed to do, to worship God. Guess what? The person making $15 an hour, car didn't break down. Their life bills didn't go off. Their hot water tank didn't fail. Their kids didn't get sick. Their job didn't lay them off. And God took care of them. You make $100 an hour, your wife left you, you got diseases that the doctor don't know what it is, because you were somewhere you shouldn't have been trying to get a check that God never put your name on. So, so many times we get caught up because we don't want to follow God because we think that if we follow God, we're going to miss out on something. You're going to miss out on getting your leg all stanky or gyrating in the club. Ain't nothing happening there but gunshots and tragedy. People are wondering, why am I, I got the right to do this? Because I got to grow up. And just like you think you got the right to grow up, God got the right to take his hand off your life and let you go out there and be the fool that you really want to be. Too many times, we let our condition determine our praise. You can have a million dollars, you better praise God. You can have a negative one dollar. You better praise God and shout hallelujah. You want to know why? You don't have friends. You don't have friends. You don't have money. You praise God. And the people of God. So many of us get caught up because we got a title. Okay. Or we got a position. Yeah. You ain't carrying no cost because you think you are what they told you. 
told you that you were when you ain't never listened to God to find out who God say you are. And God asked God, God asked them, Jesus asked them, who do you say I am? Well, the problem is, you think you're Jesus and you look at everybody else, who do you think I am? I am somebody. You ain't nothing but a filthy rag. You might have a type head H-N-I-C. You might have a type CEO, CFO. And I just love it now. People start businesses. They can't even tell you what the business is. They're going to tell you I'm the CEO. The only title that I'm really worried about is saved. If a man can give it to you, he can take it away. And you only have it because it's benefiting the person that gave it to you. Some of us think because we're participants or members of organizations that we take these secret pledges and stuff, that we better equipped to live in this society. Do you realize that until you accept Jesus, you ain't equipped to do anything? Because no person, as the deacon said, if a long clock's going to up, the cemetery is to raise up every morning. Guess what? If an organization would pick you up and hold you up and carry you on, nobody who joins the organization would get cancer. Nobody who joins the organization could die in an automobile accident. Nobody who joins that organization would ever be hungry. Nobody in that organization's children would ever be killed in the streets. That organization ain't life changing. The only organization you can join that will change your life implies that you have to pick up this cause, carry it with you. That means you're going to have some bad days. That means you're going to have some good days. But when you think things over, guess what? You better not complain. And most of all, saints of God, picking up our cross means that our problems can be a blessing as they strengthen us. So many people don't want to, and this is the problem with this as we go on with this. So many people don't want to experience pain. They don't want angst. They don't want trauma. They don't want injury. Well, all of that is part of the Christian walk. You've got to fall down to know you can get back up. You've got to do challenges to know that you can overcome. People stop overcoming, but you never overcome. Did it? Jesus is saying, crucifixion is the most vile and wretched way to torture and kill any capital offense prisoner. You were going to be nailed to a cross with no anesthesia, with nobody praying over you, and you had to carry it to where they were going to execute you. Yes. He's letting us know when you pick up this cross and you say you want to be a Christian, you have to be willing to serve. Ain't no turning back. No, no, ain't no turning back. If you say you are a Christian, then when bad things happen, you turn to Jesus. When good things happen, you thank Jesus. When all things happen, you praise God. You don't let it be conditioned on how you feel about it. So, so many of us, so many of us, practice our faith on how good we're doing in our lives. Having a new car doesn't mean that God loves you any more than anybody else. Having a big house doesn't mean that God loves you more than anybody else. Yeah. The more you have, the further you have to fall. Amen. The thing about it is, I'm not saying that you just shouldn't go out and get things. The thing of it is, is that we're supposed to look at our problems as an opportunity to grow. Our problems should not be something to keep us up at night. Our problems should not be something that we wake up in the morning and we can't even get a good night's sleep because we're worried about what's going to happen. Do you realize, no matter what you worry about, you can't fix it anyway. Amen. See, the thing about it is, is this. In our society today, I have people, even in church, not at this one, they don't mind checking a post. I tell you what, it don't matter how many friends you have on the social media. Are you a friend of God? That's the friend that you need. Nobody has one million friends. You don't even know that many people. Do you think about it? Another message, we have people who follow people. I follow people on Instagram. Why are you following them? What do you hope to get out of following them? They have nothing to offer you. All they do is increase their paycheck because you're following them and they're modeling or doing something that's going to make you be somebody to subscribe to them in order to not get anything that's going to benefit you. Well, in fact, why don't you spend time with God? Why don't you post up with a Bible? Why don't you Instagram this picture to somebody? Why don't you spend some time with somebody that may be hurt? Why don't you spend some time 
read the word of God to a child that don't know Jesus? Why don't you spend time doing something in ministry other than making your cell phone your God? Amen. There are people in churches everywhere taking their hands off of the phone. But what you checking? What are you checking? What are you looking at? Well, I just need to know because I'm just curious because if you came to church for your cell phone, you why, why, this ain't your first church for cell phone. You came to church for Jesus Christ. All of your attention should be on Jesus Christ. So many people have been deluded in their scripts and their scripture interpretations because we now have a prosperity doctrine that is permeating American airways. This is one where everybody got to be rich. What is the song I hear? Everybody gonna be no, they not. Uh -uh. No, everybody is not gonna be rich. It just can't happen that way. Because it says in Mark 14 and 7 that the poor will always be with us. Right. Do you realize if being rich was a precursor or a preliminary factor in order for people to go to heaven, many, none of our great grandparents, grandparents, and so would have been in there because they never owned a home. Many of them could never read. Many of them were denied access to equal things in the society. They tried to say they went to hell because they were not rich. The poor will always be with us. It is our duty to pick up the cross and shoulder some of the expenses, shoulder the tears, shoulder the shame, shoulder the hope, and still be a bunch of hope to the individuals who may be struggling in here. That's what ministry is about. And people say, I'm supposed to not have any pain. I'm not supposed to do anything. I'm living my best life now. If you're living your best life now, then hell is your only option. best life. With Jesus Christ, this can be a good life. Because I don't know about you when this life is over. I'm going up here to be with my Lord. You wonder, well, how can you say that, Pastor? There is a book in the Bible, one of my favorite revelations. Right. If you get around chapter 21, which is the second to the last chapter of the good book, it says this. Now, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this real slow so that people can really let it marry me. And God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Guess what? And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crime, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. That means that we don't catch hell on earth. So that we will learn how to deal with hell, so that when this world is over, guess what? We ain't going to go to hell. are so adamant about not experiencing pain, not having any heartburn, not having any disappointment. Do you realize that God is with you in the middle of a heartbreak? That God is with you in the middle of disappointment? That God is with you in the middle of unemployment? That God is with you in the middle of your illness? That God is with you in the middle of that courtroom? That God is with you in the middle of driving around with drunk drivers? That God is with you everywhere you go? He's not in presence so God is with you. So the thing of it is, is that why do people believe that? We are always going to have things in our lives that are going to hurt us. Liars are not going to go away. Bills are not going to go away. Lazy, crazy, leeching relatives are not going to go away. Those cockroaches that come out when somebody dies in your family are not going to go away. Crazy church people are not going to go away. Crazy co-workers are not going to go away. Sinful neighbors are not going to go away. Hood rats are not going to go away. Hood rich is here to stay. We get no people are not going to go away. Racist people are not going to go away. Extremists, God will put a signal fire in and out the trees are not going to go away. Backstabbers are just a part of the cause. The barriers is called for Jesus Christ. What my way of victory? In Jesus' name. We stand on the promises of God that gives us the strength to carry this cross. Because many days, it's hard to get up and get going. Your tears have soaked your pillow. So much that your eyes are now red and dry from crying. But saints of God, we must push on 
In Jesus' name. God didn't say that there would not be days like these. What he said is that I would never leave you and I would never forsake you. Knowing that God is with you, we can stand through the tears. We can stand even when our feet can't support us. We can even swallow the medicine that the doctor gave us because God is able. When you can't even hold your head up because the pain of life is beating on your head so hard, God is able to help you pick your head up and look up to where your head comes from. When you cannot even understand why your child is losing their mind, God is real. Look to the cross. Jesus paid it all on count. So that means that we would not have to die. He did not need that we would not have near death experience. He let us appreciate the saving grace and power of our Lord and Savior. Do you know what saints are coming? We need to realize this. That authentic discipleship is going to make you a pop. Authentic discipleship might not get you invited to some events. Authentic discipleship might only get you invited to some events because they heard that you write good checks or get good gifts. Authentic discipleship might have you even be ostracized from your own family. Because they see God in you and it bothers them. And no matter how they try to pull the project, you won't put down your Jesus. And it bothers them because you're forcing them to break up the how they're being born. See, the thing about it is never forget that God knows that what you are doing and what you are going through is part of the cost of carrying that cross that is building you up to be able to receive all the blessings that God has for you. Christ is here with us to help us carry this cross just as Jesus was, he was carrying his cross on Calvary. A similar man came to help him carry his cross. What makes you think that no matter what you're going through, that Jesus is not there to help you carry your cross? Oh, ye of little faith. Authentic discipleship means you got to pick it up even when it hurts. Pick it up even when people talk about you. Pick it up when people smile. Pick it up when they put you in your mouth. Pick it up when you get to say they can't stand you. Pick it up when they talk about you. Pick it up when they talk about you. Pick it up when they try to stop you. Pick it up. not follow God and God give you grace and mercy you persist on, but you now have the wisdom that you have gleaned from surviving this incident, that you can now go out and minister to somebody who may be struggling in the same way. So everything that we go through, whatever the enemy meant for evil, guess what? God can work it for you. You must never forget that life is an introduction to eternity. And will you get there? So many people are so focused on what's going on now in their life. But they can't see God. All they see is no hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than what? Jesus and his righteousness. How we live in life determines where we will spend eternity. What we have accumulated on earth has no value in heaven. You might have a 5,000 square foot house. You might have six 100 inch TVs. You might have a bigger band and a family and a Maybach. That don't make you any better than the person who's so RGA. All right. All right. That's not what God is looking at. No matter how you perceive the press t- 
to represent you. No matter how good you think you are. No matter how much you think people are impressed with you. No matter how much you like to impress people. I love name droppers. I know such and such. Do you know Jesus? I don't care who you know if you don't know Jesus. I ain't impressed with anybody who gets up in the morning to put their hands on one leg at a time like me. I ain't impressed with anybody who has a birth certificate. I ain't impressed with anybody who goes to work. I ain't impressed with anybody who, who lives a life like I do. If they can get hit by a car and stand there and say, I'm impressed, then I might be impressed. The thing of it is, is that none of us get to heaven if we don't accept Jesus. None of us gets to heaven if we don't accept Jesus. It is when we accept Jesus and accept the pain of life and trust God that he will put a smile on our face even in the midst of it all. No matter how bad it gets, we can smile. You want to know why? Because God is real. I feel it. God is real. It ain't about us doing good all the time. It is about us trusting God. We can push on through the pain. We really can't. We can't let things like Cymbalta, Tylenol, Morphine, Tramadol, and all this other try to get rid of it all, seduce us into believing, and just because we eliminate the pain that the symptoms are fixed, we need to choose that in conjunction with pain and say that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is no benefit that He made to men and He keeps your soul. Many people are sick from sin. I don't think how much I can hold on to say. If your soul is broken, you need to be. So many people focus on these things trying to get a quick fix. There ain't no quick fix. It takes time to be better. We got to talk to be better. We got to walk with Jesus. Talk with Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. Understand that you don't go through some things. You go to trouble. You go to fall down. So if you can pick up, you will realize from where all the strength of your health. Thank you, God. I'm going to get ready to close. I don't want to keep it long because even we're going to be here for three and a half hours. But the thing about it is, I was walking up there and did I want you to think about this, saints of God. As I get ready to close, I'm just getting ready for that three and a half hour Easter service. Y'all laugh. You know how Pentecostal moment it could be. But the thing about it is, is this, saints of God, I want us to think about this. Last summer, I was working in my yard because in my neighborhood we got a few of us who try to have their yard look better than everybody else's. So last summer I went out, you know purple is. It's my wife and I favorite color. So I found these purple pots. I had big pots and I put them in the front yard. And I, you probably your pastor, I planted these little seeds myself. I went and got them and nurtured them and, and took the ground and I tilled it and everything and I realized I didn't want to be a farmer but I did this. But I got all that together. Then I nurtured these little plants and fed them and everything. Then it took time, then about two months into it, the little seedlings started to break through the soil. And when they first came out, they were standing straight and erect. And they got to the point that they were struggling to get what they needed. So I come back out about three or four weeks later, and the little seedlings had started to contort their little bodies like this. Well, I don't know why. In our front yard is a massive tree that blocks the sunlight. It is absolutely amazing to me how these little seedlings without a brain contorted their body and twisted the shape of their world so that they can get touched by the but many of us don't want to get touched by the S O E. But we don't want to come to church. We don't want to turn around our monitor. We don't want to pay no tithe. We don't want to spend no time with God. We don't want to read our Bible. But these little flowers, they got up out the ground and realized they were missing the S U E. And they twisted their little bodies. And they grew to the left and to the right to get in the sun. Are you ready right now? to do what you need to do to be with the sun. They followed the SUV when you followed the SO. Are you willing to lay down your pride, your ego, your stubbornness, your cockiness, your narcissistic tendency to pick up this truck and go after Jesus? Are you willing right now to let God have his way? Are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to walk in the way that you're supposed to walk? Did you got to twist your body to get the Christ to do it? Will you take 
Can't nobody bring you love like Jesus. Can't nobody restore hope to the hopeless, sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and make the lame walk but Jesus. It is truly amazing the God that we serve. Sometimes I'm so humbled that I just can't even stand up when I think about how good God is. Because he doesn't have to do any of this for any of us. I know some people somewhere puffed up thinking that I, I am such and such and I've done such and such and I have these certifications and I can do this and they're all pieces of paper that if a fire destroys it, it never had any value. Yes, the thing about it is, is the saints of God. No matter what we do in life, no matter what obstacle we're up against, we must be following Jesus in everything that we do. Knowing that God is able. And if you fall down, he can pick you up. I always refer back to the story of Job. Nobody in the Bible fell like him. And guess what? He would not curse God and die. And none of us have fallen like Job. We've had some setbacks. But like that one rapper that said, a setback ain't nothing but a chance for a comeback. I know I've been set back. I've been knocked down. But you know what? I keep getting back up. All I do is make it harder to knock me down the next time because I know now what type of punch you got you're going to bring to the fight. So the thing about it is, saints, don't let anybody anywhere at any time dissuade you from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. May God be the glory. Go out and tell somebody about the Christian story. Amen. 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 Saints of God, as we get ready to close this service, Know that God is able. Never sell yourself short and never, ever, ever, ever put down your cross. God paid a cross for you so that you don't have to suffer and die and go to hell. Take full advantage of it. He's not asking us to be perfect. He's asking us to trust Him so that we can go through the process of being perfect. Saints, as we get ready to close, I have a couple of quick announcements. You know that next Saturday at 12 o'clock is the big Easter candy giveaway in the parking lot. Sister Robinson, pray for good weather. Right now we got some issues. And she got connections. She can make this the rain go around. <laughs> Put her arms around and she's done this before. I've never ever seen you. So I'm trying to do it right now. And then we have that. And then the next Saturday, the second Saturday, we have National Cleanup to Church Day. Uh, there's paint in the garage, there's utility utensils, pick up sticks, and stuff that we're going to do. And thank you to whoever cleaned the church this week. It smelled beautiful this morning when I walked in here. I almost wanted to step back up. Uh, I'm about to mess all this up. Uh, the church was just awesome. I mean, it was marvelous. Like, stay the hell clean this morning. Not that it's normally, but it was. But the thing of it is, those two things are coming up. The women's day is the third Sunday in May. May 16th. And Sister Sharonda Moss is the chair. And my wife, of course, is on that committee, leading that committee. And just know this, that we are here. And it's God's people talking about the seven last words. If I will have something up in celebration of it, the only thing that I may do or ask is that, uh, are you all practicing Tuesday? All right, we'll do, I'll do a, come and do a couple of recordings, and then we can do a little something on, on, on YouTube that will be up for uh, the seven last words. Could we get enough speakers? People still coping. coping. I'm going to call it coping. So uh, we're going to do it that way, and I don't want to do anything where we risk goodbye. So think of it as saints, just know that be looking for it on YouTube, on the YouTube channel on Friday at 7 o'clock as it normally will be. It will be there. And to God be the glory as we go about living our lives. Be safe, be well, know that I love you. God loves you, there's nothing you can do about it. As we go about living this Christian life, if you ever need me, call me. And whatever we do as a church family, we don't have to agree with one another. We have to see Jesus. Amen. That's what all this is about. It's about Jesus. Are you bringing glory to God or are you trying to direct attention to yourself? When we get our feelings out the way, we get a lot of work done. We're ready to Jesus the moment. Amen. Let's get ready to go.
Heavenly Father, we just thank God you met here hand in hand. Ask you, dear God, to touch our hearts and minds in the name of Lord. Such that we be able to go about our daily business, keeping you in the forefront of all that we do. Help us, dear God, to pick up our cross. Help us, dear God, to be willing to pay the cost to endure all that may come our way. Knowing that you are with us, leading you to our understanding and trust in you, dear God. We know that the cost associated with it, but the cost will outweighs anything we will go through on this side. Because we know that you paid it all on account. And whatever we have to go through, we know that on the other side, that you reward us with heaven. We just thank you today, O oh Lord, and I pray a special prayer over everyone under the sound of my voice. That you give them solace, that you give them peace, that you give them restoration, that you give them all that they need to be able to lead this Christian life. We surrender it all to you, dear God. Help us. Lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us. Bless the events that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. Bless those events in Sunday so we can have a bright, sunshiny day. Just help us, oh Lord, and no matter what, we're going to worship you in spirit and in truth. We surrender it all unto you, dear God. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present your thoughts before the presence of his joy with exceeding joy. To the God our Savior, who alone is right, with his glory and majesty, the mean and power, both now and forever. May we all say, Tell somebody you love.